morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, we're up here in the beautiful, beautiful hills, a blue mountain, part of the blue mountain range. Uh, just looking at a few herbs. Very important herbs that we probably pass every day. People probably hear about them, but don't actually know what they look like. So like here we have the trumpet tree. Uh, people use the leaves of the tree. And it's good for any cardiovascular um, issues. It's good for blood pressure. They use most of a high blood pressure. That's what it's used for me and what it is known for. But it, it has other uses, cardiovascular, um, I mean the blood pressure. And then we have that herb. I mean, the, some of them grow closer to the road, up in hills, but they normally grow near waterway. That is called matico. But in Spanish, it is known as cordon silo negro. Um, the first time I heard of this herb was from Dr. Sebi, a famous, very famous elder herbalist, you know. That herb is excellent, excellent for any stomach issues. Anything to do with the GI tract, that herb is very excellent. And those piper things that come in off it, actually in Central and South America, they use it for just condiments. They get them, dry them, and you can actually get them in stores to buy as condiments that they use. I myself use it, the leaves, dry them and I powder it and use it as, as seasoning on whatever I'm cooking or just on a salad. And then we have this, this herb right here. Most of us know it as, um, call it, we call it quarkle, quarkle bush here. That's what I grew up knowing it as, but it is, the right name is really um, guaco. And there's about 300 species of this herb. Most of them are highly medicinal. This one you can actually bathe with it, because that's what I grew up knowing it as something you can bathe it. Any skin issues that you have, you can actually use it for it, and it's good for any respiratory issues. Excellent for any respiratory issues. Also good for the adrenal glands. So it's a very, 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 very good herb. It's a blood cleanser. It's very good, and it is very fragrant. It blooms some white flowers. And when it rains, they have a very strong um, vanilla scent. Guaco. Very, very, very good stuff. Very, very good. So we have, we have so many herbs available to us. can do a lot of things that, I mean, we don't have to be dealing with a lot of ailments or even have to be subscribing to the pharmaceutical stuff because we have it here natural. The Creator provided it all for us. And then there's this plant right over here with the pink flowers. It's also known as the mimosa tree. It blooms. We, we tend to pass, it grows a lot up here, but this plant is very good for, for the nerves, like calming the nerves if you have issues sleeping. And this plant is very good for it. It's called mimosa. It's a mimosa tree. It blooms some nice pink, pink flowers. So this plant is the bark of it, the bark of the trees, and they use the blooms also. And then right here, this plant is very famous. A lot of, I grew up playing with it, but didn't know that it has so many uses and it's so very powerful. They call it a sensitive plant, or mimosa podica. That's the botanical name, mimosa podica. It blooms up a little flowers with some pink, like a ball, pink fuzzy ball. When you touch it, it lock up. Very, very good. Very, very good. So, and this plant is excellent for any urinary tract infection, anything, you, anything to do with the urinary tract, and also excellent for a prostate. Very, very good for any prostate, prostate inflammation, um, prostatitis, what they call benign prosthetic hyperplasia. That's, this plant is very, very good for it. Very, very good. And it's a nerve stimulant as well. Very, very good for the, for the nervous system, the nerve stimulant. So you see, we are just in this little area alone, we have quite a few, quite a few herbs. And ooh, this plant, this tree right here, we have, it, this grows up here like wildfire. This tree, although you're not really seeing it so clearly, but this, this tree right here, it's called, it's a West Indian elm. It's a West Indian elm tree. Um, in the bark is very, very all, every part of the tree is good. It actually blooms a little berry-like thing. It, the young ones, when they eat them, they taste just like, they taste just like okra. They have the same mucilage effect. And then we have this plant right here can grow very, very tall, sometimes up to 20, I guess 30 feet tall. And then we might see it smaller. 
But the, the thing with this plant, it blooms of flowers. Comes out in a long like bunch, white. But most people don't know that that, that that is very edible. It's called isote. I-Z-O-T-E, isote, because isote flour is very good in, very, very, very good. It tastes exactly like cabbage, but it's natural. It's not like cabbage, which is, which is acidic, but it is not. It tastes exactly like cabbage, and the, the flowers come right out the top. But you won't see any now. You might see them dry up. But if you see it, you can, you can cut it, you can, and you can use it. You can, you can, it can be eaten, whether raw or you can steam it. That's like how you steam any other um, leafy greens. Very, very, very good. Um, a natural plant, very nutritional. So, you know, we have a lot growing around. All right, All right. here we have this herb known as Spanish needle. I don't know if most people know how to identify, but it's very easily identified. We mostly know it as rabbit feed. I would feed rabbit with it. That's what is mostly known. That's what I knew it for growing up. A Spanish needle or Biden's, Biden's pelosa, that's the botanical name. But it's, it's a very, very, very good herb, very potent. Um, they refer to it as a, as, a, a, as a broad spectrum antibiotic, but antibiotic does mean anti-life, really. It's a more probiotic, but it is very, very good. It's edible, the leaves are edible, very edible. Um, I've used it to make a pesto with just with um, walnut. It's very good. I put it in a soup like a pepper pot soup, or just steam it with, with callaloo. The leaves, especially the young tender parts. Sometimes you can't get it before it starts to bloom. But it, it's very good. Very, 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 very good. Okay, so we have here this plant. It's a fern. It's in the fern family. Um, it's known, known as Chanka Pietra. That's the name that most people might know it by if you're going to do a search on it. Chanka Pietra means Spanish for brickstone. But you can identify it readily by the seed on the leaf. And that is what another name, another folk name. Seed on the leaf or carimi seed. That's what a lot of people know it as. It depends on where on the island you go. So it's a very, very potent herb for any um, kidney stone, gallstone, stuff like that. And urinary tract issues. It's a diuretic, so it will, you know, let you pass you in a lot to prevent um, fluid buildup in, in, in the tissues. So it's a very, very good herb. Very, very good herb. Also for mid blood pressure issues. And we have here, very interesting herb. They call it red spiderling. There are two types. This one blooms are white flowers, and then you have this one right here. It's the same thing. It blooms a red flower. So you have two types that bloom. One blooms red and one blooms a white flower. But this one blooms a red flower. We call it red, red spiderling. So it's very good. This herb is excellent. Excellent for, and it is used as a, the leaves can be eaten. It can be put in a salad and eaten as well. Raw. But it's very good for any kidney issues. Good for kidney issues. Um, so good for anemia, so it has a lot of iron in there, iron phosphate. Um, it has a top root, so the root goes, goes deep down. It's not that easy to take up, so. Here we go, all right, we have this plant, which a lot of people know. What's our Jamaica known as? Rice bitters. People call it rice and peas bush because it bears a little pod-like and then the flowers are white. But this plant is very, very good. If you have um, for any skin issues, it's a very, very powerful blood cleanser. Also, if you have like urinary incontinence, you're not able to hold the urine, it's very good for that as well. Excellent. But it's mainly known for as, as a blood cleanser. I used to drink this growing up. Never like it. Very bitter. Very, very bitter. <laughs> but very good. Excellent. Excellent. You see, it grows all over the place. If it was, if we're getting a lot of rain, I'd say a whole lot more. It grows a lot more. And this tree right here. The red very stands out a lot. It grows all over the place. It's, it's known as a tourist tree. Um, in Spanish, it's known as palo mulato. And it's known as gumbo limbo. That is the one that you mainly find. I don't remember the botanical name. It's a long name. Um, but the, they call it a tourist tree as well because it, it peels, the, the bark of it peels. Look like when uh, a Caucasian person gets sunburned, which it is very good for that. Occasionally, this plant is very good for any skin issues. 
any skin issues that you have, this plant is very good. It's a very good blood cleanser as well. It makes a very nice tea. The sap that comes from it is very fragrant. It's very crazy. I, th I think they use it in, in um, some potpourri and, and stuff like that. But the bark, when you make the tea, the tea is red. Actually red, 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 red. But it has a very nice, mild vanilla taste to it. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent um, tree. The excellent herb. Um, that the bark can, can be the bark of the tree and the leaves can be used actually in the cherry family because it bears a little fruit that birds love a lot, like a little red fruit. It's edible as well. Humans can eat it. Alright, here we go again. We have another herb here at the one too. If most people don't know it, it's probably a new introduction though. It's called Nastrutium. I've only seen it growing up here though. I've never seen it anywhere else. I tend to like anywhere that is very cool have a um, water that is more damp. So the thing about this is edible. The, the leaves are edible and the flowers are edible. You can put it in a, in a salad. And, and it's very nutritious as well. Um, very mineral dense. So it's, it's, a very, it's a very good herb, nastrutium. So if you have ever had um, horseradish, that's the only thing I can compare it to. It have a peppery taste to it. Like an aftertaste when you eat it and you get that, that peppery taste to it. So it's um, nastrutium. This is something special that a lot of people don't. If you probably have it growing in your yard, they'll probably go somewhere and see it growing out of the cracks of the wall. Yeah, it's called Maiden here Fern. It grows up here like wildfire. It, it's called Maiden here Fern. It's very good. Very good for respiratory issues. Also very good for female issues. Um, anything to do with um, the female reproductive um, system is very good. Um, they also use it, well you see like how this look black, they tend to use it for to blacken the hair, blacken the hair and um, what you call it to, to help stop hair fall out. But it's a very good fern and ferns, ferns are some of the most powerful powerful healing plants you can find and most ancients of most of most plants. So this is just one species of fern that is very good and it, and it grows up here a lot and it's free you can come and you can boil say this like this and the guaco you can actually mix this together and drink it as a tea you know any, any issues lung issues and the respiratory tract in general well let me hear you say mountain, mountain.